and welcome back. Welcome back to Critical Mass Radio Show. I am your host, Rick Franzi. As I said before the break, we have in the studio Evo Tijan. And Evo, I invited Evo to come. He is CEO uh, and President of Commerce West Bank. And I've asked him to come to the show to discuss the importance of community banking and its impact on our local business. If you're listening to us live on octalkradio.net, we'd like to say thank you. You can also find our shows as podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker.com, several hundred former radio show guests whose CEOs have been on our radio show as guests, and their company has put their interview on their website, as well as other business-oriented podcasting services. Simply type in Critical Mass Radio Show in your podcasting software, and you'll be able to subscribe to our show on a weekly basis. Evo, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's I appreciate it. It's a pleasure to have you in the studio. I've been looking forward to this interview since you and I met earlier this year. Let's start very simply by asking you to set the stage and give us some context for your bank. Sure. So um, Commerce West Bank is headquartered here in Irvine, California. Uh, we have offices in uh, San Diego and Orange County. Um, primarily, we service the four major counties in Southern California, LA, Orange County, Inland Empire, and San Diego County. Uh, mostly small and what we call small middle market companies. So those are usually revenues between one million to a hundred million dollars uh, privately held. Uh, anything from manufacturers to wholesalers, distributors, service companies, professionals. Mm -hmm. We have about two or three thousand clients uh, in Southern California. And um, you know, the bank has a, a very unique business model, I guess I'll call it. So that, that was one of the questions I want to ask. What, in your opinion and from what your clients tell you, what makes your bank different? You know, Rick, I'd probably say three things. Um, number one is uh, the bank is really all things to some people versus being all things to all people. Okay. I think a bank model today is very generic. So number one, we focus on banking the businesses, the owners, and the key executives. <clears throat> We're not in the business of trying to stuff mailers for home loans or home equity lines or bring in you know, 10,000 free checking accounts. We really just focus on the, business, uh, the small business and small middle market companies. Okay. <clears throat> Number two, um, what's unusual about the bank is we customize and tailor make every loan. Uh, so, uh, you know, my example I like to give sometimes is like someone coming in trying to get a mortgage loan, um, and they want a fixed rate mortgage loan, and it's a 30-year fixed rate. So we tell you it's four percent, 30 years. You come back to the banker, and you say, I want one for 22 and a half years. Well, most bankers will look at you strangely and say, hey, Rick, there's a 15 or 30-year fixed rate product. Right, for 21. At Commerce West, we ask the reason why. Okay. It makes sense why you should have a 22 and a half year mortgage. We actually create a 22 and a half year mortgage mm -hmm. product for you. So every loan in the system, especially for businesses, are customized and tailor made versus taking one, um, you know, and putting you in a box or a pricing sheet or a FICO driven product. That's unusual. Probably less than one percent of all banks really customize and tailor make their products. And the third thing is we do the same thing on the depository side. <clears throat> you know, we create a customized business analyzed business checking account for you. We can create money market accounts with different tiers or different rates for you. So uh, I think the bank is unusual that instead of the transactional or the volume side of it, mm -hmm. we grow one relationship at a time. Isn't overall, uh, Evo, isn't that one of the values of working with a community bank is the ability to sort of get a personalized service, but it sounds like you're taking that personalized service down even to a deeper level of customization of, of product offering services as well. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, I think being involved, um, you know, I, I grew up in the large banks and been in the small banks. I think in the smaller banks, you do have more of the uh, ability as a business owner to sort of tell your story and have uh, a good working relationship. I think where Commerce West Bank differentiates ourselves a little bit more is we treat it sort of as a partnership. Uh, we want to get to understand how, you know, how your business functions and how to make it successful. Well, <clears throat> I think the only way to do that is sort of what we've des designed in our proven business model, which is customizing things that really fit for the business owner. So most of our clients typically come from the larger banks, the J.P. Morgan Chase, okay. the okay. Wells Fargo, <clears throat> you know, maybe the Union Bank of California. And the reason being is most of these business owners are, are actually in the retail branches where they have cookie cutter products <clears throat> that are off the rack. Mm -hmm. And you know, another example I can give is almost like getting a customized tailor-made suit. I don't think most people know better until they have one on, and then they realize that maybe the ones that they get at the store are, are a little bit baggier, or they don't fit as well. Right. And I think for a business, that is important to do, is you've got to get something that really fits for what their needs are, whether they're trying to grow their company, whether they're trying to have succession planning, or 
they're going to a different business line or product line. Mm -hmm. We're talking with Ivo Tijan. He is CEO of Commerce West Bank. We're talking about, in the first segment, kind of the differentiation of a community bank and the differentiation specifically of Commerce West Bank. What You said you, you had a kind of a history and a, a career path in bigger banks. Quickly, give us give us your the genesis of your career at this point, Ivo. <clears throat> sure. Um, I think I was about 17 when I came home, about 17 or 18, I graduated high school, and uh, I told my father um, that I knew what my calling was. Well. And he said, uh, and what is that, my son? And my father's a very traditional kind of guy, and um, I told him that I wanted to be a banker. Um, I'm not sure he was happy at the time. His, his uh, comment was, he said, I want you to uh, do what your brother or sister did, go out and get a uh, you know student loan, go to college for four or five years, and come home and tell me what you want to be. Mm -hmm. um, so to not disappoint him, um, since he didn't have any money and I didn't have any money, I decided to work during the day and went to school at night. Okay. So uh, applied at four or five uh, different banks, got accepted to one. Um, so I, I, you know, my career started off and it became household finance, that became First Interstate mm -hmm. Bank, and then I went to uh, Great Western Bank. Um, Home Savings America, El Dorado Bank, um, and then went up to uh, Commerce West. So uh, I progressed, um, I guess, fairly quickly in my career, so I've been fortunate in that sense. And um, that's how I ended up with Commerce West. And how long have you been with Commerce West? Uh, so I must have started when I was 10, I guess. Because, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So I've been there probably 13, 14 years. Really? And uh, I was the founder of the bank. Um, so we actually launched the bank at the end of 2001. Wow. What made you want to do that? Uh, it's an interesting question. I was, at the time, um, I'm not really sure my wife was happy because um, I had a, a pretty good career. Okay. And um, I decided uh, to resign. Um, I think, I don't know, I gave like an eight week resignation. Mm -hmm. I had my son who was nine months old. Wow. And I was sitting over at dinner with my wife and um, I told her that, um, you know, I, I, left, I left the job. and. I'm going to start this thing called Commerce West, and um, I think she almost reached across Rick and, and took me out because she says you got a nine-month-old, so yeah. what's, what's the plan? What are you doing here? And uh, my vision for Commerce West at the time was to create what I call the Nordstroms or American Express of painting. Okay. Um, to try to high service model. <clears throat> high service, very focused, very niche-minded, uh, and it wasn't all things to all people; it was all right. things to some people. And the ideology there was to create this business model that was unique in the sense of customization and tailor-making products, but focusing really on what we considered the most underserved business, you know, underserved market for banking, which was the small and small middle market companies. Mm -hmm. Those are the usually the individuals that can't get the services. I, I think retail you can. You know, you, you, you want fifty thousand ATMs and, right. and you want the ability to access your account in you know, many different ways. But uh, we think for small business owners and small and, and small middle market companies uh, they need that. They need a Commerce West Bank. And, and that banking partnership is so critical for small to middle market companies. It especially is. as they're growing. <clears throat> you know, if you look at the U.S. market, um, you know, uh, community banks or smaller banks actually play a much bigger role in small business loans than their counterparts. Mm -hmm. And it was the same for us, you know, in the larger banks. Um, when, I, when I was with the larger banks. So, so yes, it, it plays an important part in the local and even the national economy as well. So Commerce West Bank is really a manifestation of your entrepreneurial spirit. Yes, I think, I think it surprises a lot of people at the time, but um, you know it was something that was sort of a goal or, or a dream or a vision, and I had a lot of great people surrounding me um, at the time, and, and a lot of great clients actually that um, you know decided to, to I guess buy on on the dream and right. and uh, felt that you know the business model was a great solid business plan. And, you know, the company just got named <clears throat> last week the 32nd highest performing bank in the nation. Congratulations. Um, that's out of all banks, <clears throat> large and small. So to be 32, um, wow. something that we're, we're pretty proud of. So the bank's done really well. That's congratulations. I didn't, rec I didn't realize that. And that's a, that's a great uh, badge of success that shows that you're making progress and you're one of the elite banks then in that sense of 32nd. Yeah, the, the team is in well, and that was something that we were really, really proud of. Great. We're talking with Evo Tijan, and we're going to take a break here on Critical Mass Radio Show. He is CEO of Commerce West Bank. When we come back, I'm going to ask you to talk about some of the most important elements in business banking, and, and also we're going to talk about the three causes of failures of business. So, ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. You're going to want to hear Evo's answers to those questions and more after these words from our sponsors. <laughs> 
Let's face it, not all company challenges are the same, which is why strategic market intelligence can help identify the actionable information you need to be more competitive. Gain a better understanding of your brand, competition, best prospects, or new product opportunities to generate greater revenues in 2015. Call 949-357-9547 or visit www.strategicmarketintelligence.com. Are you ready to tap into the power of social media to promote your business? It's easy to get social with Turn Up the Volume, the award-winning social media marketing professionals who know how to get results. Drive web traffic, boost sales, get social today. Visit www.turnupthevolume.com. That's turnupthevolume.com. Richard Franzi is a highly sought-after keynote speaker on topics of interest to CEOs of middle firms across North America. Richard's talks include Killing Cats Leads to Rats, a fascinating look at how unintended consequences of CEOs' decisions impact their firm's performance. Your Gray Matter Matters, which explores how a CEO's mindset can differentiate a middle market firm and define its culture. Richard delivers talks to a variety of audiences, ranging from executive team retreats to keynotes in front of hundreds of CEOs. To learn more about his talks, visit criticalmassforbusiness.com and select the contact page or call 949-887-4104. Welcome back to this edition of Critical Mass Radio Show. I am your host, Rick Franzi. Evo Tijan is our guest. He's CEO of Commerce West Bank. You're listening to us live on octalkradio.net, and all of our archives, our podcasts, can be found on iTunes, Stitcher.com, Spreaker.com, several hundred former guests' websites whose companies have put the interview I did with their CEO on their website, as well as various other business-oriented podcasting services. Before the break, you all, I said we're going to talk about a couple things. The first one I'd like to get to is, that in your experience, what's the most important element in business banking? And, those, how, and how do you apply this factor in helping middle market companies succeed? Um, you know, I guess you can look at it from two different perspectives, whether it's the relationship from the bank side or the client side. I think today, based on sort of the regulatory environment that we're in, and um, it, it would be wiser for businesses to understand that they need to have a partner, a, a financial partner. I, I think banks play an important role in the sense that they they are actually, I guess I consider them the largest shareholder of your company, okay. right? Where you have relationships maybe with attorneys and CPAs, and they're billing you. It's not good or bad; they're billing you. We sort of invest into the company. So I think on the business banking side, you really want to get to the decision makers. You want to get to um, the true art of commercial banking. There's, there's very few commercial bankers left out there that's different than mortgage bankers and all. People that can really dig into your balance sheet and your income statement and help you understand how to grow the company mm -hmm. or how to um, create a different business model within it. And I think that's sort of the partnership, I think, in business banking that you really need to have today because the world has gotten more complex and it's definitely gotten a lot more competitive. Right. Thank you. Uh, Let's talk about the three causes of failures in business. This is something that you and I discussed when I met with you earlier, and I thought, well, we've got to, I've got to bring your real-world knowledge here and share it with our audience. So, Rick, what I, I think you asked me a question. You said, you know, what, what are the three causes that you know, make a company fail? <clears throat> and I said, you know, through, through my experience through all the years, there's really three things. Uh, number one is growth. I think what most business owners and businesses don't understand <clears throat> is that it's not because you're in the restaurant business or <clears throat> you're in a retail shop or you run a yogurt store. Uh, I think it primarily has to do with growth. Growth has the ability to eat up all of your working capital. It does. So sometimes I joke around with business owners. <clears throat> they come back with their financial statements and they show net income of a million dollars. And they sit back with me and they said, Eva, why, why do I have negative $25,000 in my checking account? Yeah. <clears throat> so, so number Where's one. Where's all that profit? Yeah, number one, you have to manage growth, understand growth, and that once you grow at a certain percentage, um, you're either going to have to have a rich uncle or rich aunt, or you're going to have a banker, you know, be really involved in that partnership. Okay. <clears throat> number two is what I call debt structure. I think a lot of people don't understand that uh, proper debt structure is really the only way 
that you can manage a company, whether it's growing or not growing. <clears throat> so what do I mean? Uh, it's almost like taking a line of credit and as easily as buying uh, equipment or buying a car with it. <clears throat> I think people don't understand, you've now uh, commingled the debt. Should be There should be a line of credit for short-term working capital. Okay. For your time and differences of collecting your receivables and your you know paying your payables, and there's another portion that really is what I consider long-term working capital. You take a car or you take this table that we have here. It's a depreciating asset. Yes. <clears throat> when it's a depreciating asset, you don't want it on an interest-only type of payment, where you sort of fool yourself at the end and don't realize that the principal stays exactly the same over a five-year period. Where you might have to realize that the car five or ten years from now might be worth a tenth of the cost. Right. <clears throat> so I think debt structure is also an important thing. Number three, I think, is understanding cash flow. I believe that most business owners and entrepreneurs have a great way to grow their business. But when you start sitting down with them and showing them their balance sheet or their income statement and saying, hey, where's the cash flow coming out, I don't think most of them really understand it. <clears throat> so I think really understanding your cash flow, uh, not, not just by EBITDA or anything like that, but really understanding your sources and uses and what you're going to be using the cash for, I think is an important element. So I would say that those are probably the three things that typically cause a business to either have issues or maybe sometimes go out of business. Right. Um, but if you can manage those three things, I think you'll do really, really well as a company. Is this a part of how Commerce West Bank approaches new clients as well? Is, th is this in your DNA to start to ask these questions to <coughs> create awareness within your new clients? It is. You know, someone asked me this morning, they said, Eva, why, why did you get into banking? Right? And to be quite honest, the number one reason um, is that I wanted to help people become more successful. Really? I, I love hearing the stories where they start from the garage and I can help them become a $10 million, a $5 million, a $20, a $30 million company uh, to as big as a billion dollar company, to be quite honest, in the past. <clears throat> but I think the fundamental part there is that um, in that partnership, I think you help them outside of just banking. You help them you know, have the ability to take a trade discount <clears throat> or recreate their workflows or their process or how they want to invest into their company. And I think that's where a, you know, a banker, I think the Commerce West Banker differentiates ourselves is the success of the company is ultimately our success, but we go beyond, right? When you talk about you know, the ability of understanding cash flow, we spend the time to sit down with our business owners to make them understand how to read cash flow and, and why there's some certain triggers or covenants that are important. We give them the math of saying, here's a certain growth rate. If you grow over 25%, you're going to have to have outside financing. Anything under 25% growth, you'll be fine. You'll do it from your own cash flow. <clears throat> so I think those are the things um, that I believe um, that you need to help entrepreneurs and business owners and CEOs and executives with. And that's what we do. Excellent. I'm really enjoying this conversation we're having today with Evo Tijan. He is CEO, founder of Commerce West Bank. Uh, we have about five minutes left, so I, I've got two questions that I'd like to get into the five minutes. And the first one is, Quickly, what are you seeing as trends in the banking industry? What should CEOs of middle market companies be learning from you about what the future trends in banking? <clears throat> well, I think you know, there's definitely, I think from the banking industry, sorry, a consolidation that you're seeing out there. There's, there's less and less of us. I think there's a, uh, something like 150, approximately 150 banks left in California. <clears throat> um, I think what middle market companies <clears throat> should be looking at is, um, you want to get together with what I call more of a CMI lender if you're looking for working capital. There's a lot of real estate banks out there, and then, right. and then uh, there's banks that I think are on the larger scale, like the, you know the, the large banks out there that sort of offer a multitude of different types of products and services. <clears throat> I think what you need to get to today as a middle market company is get in front of commercial or business bankers, people that really deal with businesses in and out, not necessarily construction loans or mortgage bankers and things of that nature. So. My advice would be, I think, if I ran a middle market company, whatever bank it is that you go to, get in front of real business commercial bankers, people that do business loans, not, again, mortgage loans right. or consumer loans or home equity loans. That would be my advice. Yeah, and you said earlier they're harder and harder to find. They are. Um, we joke around the industry, we're sort of like a dying breed, right? Uh, it's like the, like the dinosaurs, I guess. <clears throat> there's, uh, there's very few commercial banks and commercial bankers. Uh, there's, you know, Obviously, a lot of retail bankers and mortgage bankers, and that, those industries continue to seem to, to grow in some capacity. Uh, but I think a true commercial banker, someone that can tear through your balance sheet and income statement and talk about your business model and how you grow the company, um, those are a dime a dozen. Those are, those are a rare breed. Right. I grew up with a lot of those uh, individuals. Actually, most of them have 
retired or mm-hmm. become CEOs or CFO of, of companies or join private equity, but um, those are the type of bankers I think that you want to deal with if you're a business owner today. It certainly sounds like it from this conversation today here on Critical Mass Radio Show. Evo Tijan, last question, your guiding principle. I ask uh, as many guests as I can over the years this question. What I mean, guide, what I mean by guiding principle, Evo, is of all the philosophies and lessons that you've learned in business, is there kind of an overarching philosophy or a core principle that you're using to continue to lead and grow Commerceless Bank? You know, the one thing that probably comes to mind right now is someone once told me it's not the mileage of the car, but where the car has been. So um, I, I grew up um, fairly fast in the banking industry. <clears throat> and, um, I, you know, I, I remember that that I was always hypercritical of uh, my age, and I was always hypercritical of certain things like that. And um, one day someone told me, they said, Evo, it's not the mileage of the car. It's where the car has been is most important. <clears throat> From the, As a business leader, I think that taught me a lot. I think, uh, you know, you can say that's, you know, not judging the book by its cover, but right. <clears throat> I think you can have freeway miles and you can have stop and go miles. Right. Uh, so I think when and you, off-road miles. <clears throat> off-road miles. <clears throat> so I think what you want to do is be able to, when you hire people or look for the best and retain the best out there, is that I don't think you necessarily judge from a resume that has 10 years of experience or 20 years of experience okay. or 30 years. It could be good that they have 30. It could be bad they have 30. Right. <clears throat> it could be good that they have 10. It's just a fact, <clears throat> right? It's just a fact. So I think if you can reach beyond that, including business owners today, there are some that are 80 years old that are still out there doing really well. Right. <clears throat> There's some that are in their 20s and 30s that are doing really well. I think to judge them based on the number of years um, is probably the wrong, you know, uh, methodology. So, what I've learned in my career is that I was so critical about that uh, that I remember I didn't show up to an award function because of my age. I was named uh, the youngest vice president for this bank. It was a large bank. I didn't show up because I didn't want most of my managers at the time was they were in their 40s or 50s, and uh, that's when I got that advice from someone. And I've always stuck that as as sort of a a philosophical statement when you're hiring people, when you're looking at clients, is that you really judge them for who they are. You judge them for the actions that they do, for their ability and their skill sets, whether natural or inherited. But um, I think that's helped us a lot, um, you know, as leaders and you know, in, in the bank to really hire the best, retain the best, and get the best clients out there. We've taken a lot of entrepreneurial um, risks, I guess we could say, by banking some companies that we really bet it on the individual. Right, bet on the and, people. Um, so it's not the mileage of the car, it's where the car has been, I guess is my, one of my philosophies that I, I guess stuck to me right now. I love asking that question. I've been asking it since we started the show, and many times I hear something that I, I have never heard before. Today is one of those, so thank you oh, so for giving me a new perspective and insight. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate having me here. All right. If someone would like to learn more about Commerce West Bank, where should they go online? How do they find you? Um, they just go to cwbk.com. So it's commercialistbank.com, cwbk.com. They can email me if they want. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm easily accessible, itjan at cwbk.com. They can call the office if they're old-fashioned, uh, 949-251-6959. So uh, we're pretty easily accessible, and we have a, a pretty flat organization. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, we're, we're open to any discussions or any questions or advice that people want for anything uh, right. in terms of banking or, or business. Well, I've been looking forward to this interview for some time. You did not disappoint. It was a great, thoughtful conversation. Thank you for being a friend of the program, and welcome to the Critical Mass Business Community, Evo. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate being here. It's an honor uh, to be here, and I mean that sincerely, and uh, I wish you well. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to say goodbye here on Critical Mass Radio Show. I am your host, Rick Franzi, saying until the next time we have a chance to talk, I hope that all of your business decisions will move your company in a positive direction.